we'll be looking at dynamic material instance changes through C++ code. As always, I have an example going on in the background here, so just to see what we're going to end up with. We have a simple cube, which is going to change color when we press play. So this is being called on the begin play function, and it's changing the parameters from this material instance here. Just to note that if you wanted to follow along or get your hands on the project that I work from here with all of these different examples for the different topics that I cover in the weekly content, all of this can be found through the selected Patreon tiers, so you can have a look for that down below in the description. To follow along with your own content, just to let you know what you'll need, I'll go to the material setup here. So I have the mi underscore flat gray, which is an instance of mi underscore flat. This is quite simply a parameterized vector named color. So this is important. We'll be changing this by the name a little bit later. So we need something called color. I'm also changing the emissive strength, which is being multiplied by the color being passed in, which is how we got that yellow glow. And then I've got the parameterized single values here as well for the metallic, specular, and roughness. So you'll need a material that looks something like that. And then for the instance, this is obviously just a child of that. Uh, material and if you're not, you're not familiar with the material setup we'll go to the base material create a material instance and you'll have something like the mi underscore flat here uh, which basically has the roughness emissive metallic specular and color properties all exposed now you will need these and if you're creating your own you'll need to remember how you've spelt things as the spelling will be specific to what will be changing in the c code for the c class it's another simple actor class so just drop this down, find the actors, go to the material instance dynamic change, and you can see the parent class is just a base actor. So with all of that set up and ready to go, this is the actor class. A very standard kind of setup here. What I've done is created a U static mesh component, named this one mesh, and given that a U property of visible anywhere, just so that we can see that in the editor. And then I've created a U material interface named material. If you're unfamiliar, this is the type of material which will allow you to set this as a base material or an instance material. So this just gives us both options. The other options are the U material or the U material instance. Over in the code file, the important thing here, and again, I'll always drop this down so you can see if I've added any extra includes, which in this case I haven't needed to. All I'm doing is on the construction, we are creating the mesh component by using the create default sub object of U static mesh component named mesh, setting this to be the root component using the root component equals mesh. And then below, as I said, all of the magic is happening on the begin play. Uh, what we need to do is we're going to create or fill the object for the material by getting the mesh dot get material and getting the index zero. So zero is just the first index on the static mesh. Of course, if you have a static mesh with several different material slots, you'll need to make sure you're selecting the material in the correct slot that you want to uh, update and override in a moment. Then we'll create our new dynamic material. So we need a dynamic material to actually allow us to change this at runtime. And this needs to be using a material instance at this stage, not a base material. So we'll do that by creating a new U material instance dynamic. I've named this one dynamic material, and this is going to be equal to the U material instance dynamic and the create functionality within that. That takes two parameters, which is uh, simply, first of all, the material that we want to use as the template, and then the actor reference, which is going to be quite simply, in this case, this. Next, we want to make sure that the material that is now in use on our static mesh is going to be the dynamic version we've just created. So we're going to say mesh.setMaterial, and that will be the index zero. So again, the same index we've taken from above. In this case, that works because it is the only index that we have and we'll be passing in the dynamic material that we've just created. Now the comment just above is a little bit confusing. I realize that as I'm looking back through it. Uh, I've said slot one, but of course this is essentially an array. The element index is an array, so slot one is the first material, which is kind of what I meant there. So I'll just update that as technically it is slot zero, but it's the first and only material that we'll be uh, referencing. And then finally, the two steps below, this is where we're actually updating and changing the parameters within our material. So to do this, we're going to say that the dynamic material, we will set the scalar parameter value. So we'll use this function for things like single floats. This will be for the things like the metallic, the roughness, anything which is just a kind of single float value. And we want to pass in the name of the property that we're changing. So in this case, you can see I've updated the emissive strength 
and I've set this to 50, which is why it has quite a powerful glow inside of the editor. And then the second property that we're changing, so I just wanted to show the two main different options you'll usually come across here. Uh, this is setting the vector parameter value, so dynamic material set vector parameter value. Again, we're just passing in the name of the parameter that we want to change, which is the color, and then passing it in the F linear color, and I've chosen this to be yellow. So these are all the steps that you need to do to, first of all, get the material template that you want to create the dynamic material of, pass that dynamic material back to your static mesh, and then the final steps are just changing the parameters within that dynamic material that you want to be uh, altered at runtime. So as always, now that we have context of what's happening, I'm just going to head back into the editor, and we can see here that what we're expecting to happen is we'll press play, and this is going to turn yellow because we're using the instance, which will have the parameters that we've just checked here. So again, remembering the name specifically is color, and the other value we're changing is the emissive strength. So with that knowledge, we will press play, and this will turn yellow and have the emissive strength set to 50. And that's it. So that is as difficult as it is to change a material instance and its properties at runtime through C++ code. If you've enjoyed this or found the video useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps the channel to grow, is greatly appreciated, and helps the video reach as many people as possible. And of course, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be kept up to date with any of the content as it's released on a weekly basis. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.